This is a demonstration of the AI-powered vehicle damage evaluator. I have several VINs from late model 3 series BMWs and I've copied one to my clipboard. So we'll paste that in. We immediately see that we got back some vehicle details. So we have 150 fields of information, potential information about that vehicle or that VIN, which is a late model 3 series BMW. That information came from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. We're gonna use that information later on to create a final analysis and to create a summary using a large language model. The next thing we need to do is input the color. That did not come as part of the information from the API call. We also need to input the current mileage. We'll put it in an arbitrary 56,750 miles. The next field is the initial auction estimate. Just like we called out to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration for the vehicle information, there are third-party API services where we can provide the VIN, the overall condition of the car, and the mileage, and get back an estimated value for the car. In order to get an initial auction estimate, we've simulated a call out to Edmunds.com and returned a value of $34,560 for the car. Again, this is just simulated. Those are generally paid services. For the sake of the demonstration, we're just simulating that value. Moving on, the next thing we need to do is upload images of the car, or specifically damage to the car. So the concept of the AI Powered Vehicle Damage Evaluator is that we upload images of damage to the car based on the type, make, and model of the car, the mileage, and the value. We assess the amount of damage to the vehicle using those images. Based on that amount of damage, we devalue the car. So we come up with a final auction estimate, which takes into account the amount of damage to the car. So let's upload those files. I have three files. I have moderate to minor damage. I have some severe damage. Damage, and I have an image that has no damage. Now, why would we want to do that? There could be an instance where someone uploads images of a car and one of those images doesn't have damage. We don't want the application to automatically assume there's damage and assign a devaluation or reduce the amount of the value of the car based on an image that shows no damage. So we want to prove the application can interpret the images properly, decide whether or not there's damage, and then evaluate how much damage there is to the car and how much that will devalue the car. So we've uploaded the images and we'll take a second to let those upload. So those images are uploaded. The next thing the application did was enhance those images. So we took the original images. Now, when we upload these images, somebody could have uploaded an image that was underexposed or overexposed, so too dark or too bright, or maybe it was out of focus. So ideally what the application would do would be to enhance these images. Why do we want to enhance the images? Because we want the best image possible when we create our dense vector embedding using open clip. So for each one of these images, we're creating a 768 dimension dense vector embedding for each image. We're then doing a KNN semantic image similarity search using the dense vector embedding against an Amazon Open Search Vector Index. The vector index was recently announced at the New York Summit at the end of July. We built a database of over 4,000 images that have damage and a couple hundred images of vehicles that don't have damage. Now, why such a small data set for undamaged vehicles? We're only going to focus on late model 3 series BMWs. There are plenty of data sets out there that have images of the latest cars, and you could use one of those data sets for the sake of the demonstration to save time. We've just built a database of late model 3 series BMWs for undamaged. For damaged cars, the 4,000 and images cover most types of vehicles. For each one of the images, we returned 10 images. So we did a KNN semantic similarity search against Amazon Open Search, and we got back 10 images. Each one of those images have a damage description, scratch, dent, broken window, flat tire, etc. That came from the database. It also has a severity, a degree of severity, or a degree of damage. That can be anything from none to minor to moderate to severe. For no damage, that's zero devaluation. So we're not reducing the auction value of the car by anything. For minor damage, we'll reduce the vehicle value value by 10%, for moderate 20%, and for severe 40%. Those are arbitrary numbers that can be adjusted, and they could also be adjusted based on the type of the car. We returned 10 images, an arbitrary number for each one of our images. So we did a semantic image similarity search, return 10 images. We take the results of those 10 images and we create an individual image analysis. So this is our second vehicle. You can remember that it had pretty severe damage to the front tire and front end of the car. Again, a pretty accurate set of results based on image using the semantic similarity search with the dense vector embedding. And finally, we have our third vehicle, which was undamaged. And we see a set of images of vehicles that are undamaged. We also did an analysis as part of that. So based on the results coming back, we said that if more than 40% of the images showed damage, then we would consider the vehicle damaged. And then we looked at the percentage of damage and the percentage of undamaged and the average severity of each one of those images.
images. Again, they're arbitrarily assigned. Ideally, you would go in and hand label each one of these images as to the level of severity. For the sake of the demonstration, we just randomly assigned a severity level to that, and each one of those levels have an associated amount of devaluation. So for each one of these, these searches, we did a suggested average devaluation. So for image two, it's 22%. For image one, it was 25%. For image three, it was obviously 0% because it was undamaged. We then take the three analysis and we combine those into a final analysis. So we have the information we got back for the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, VIN, year, make, model, series, body style, drivetrain, engine, etc. We also have the mileage and the color that we input. We have the base estimated value of the vehicle that came from the third party API call. We also have the initial auction estimate. So what do we think the car's value is now? Again, we simulated a call out to Edmunds.com. We have a total number of images that show damage, two out of three, that is correct. We have a recommended devaluation due to the damage of 47%. So based on our three semantic image searches, we got back the images. We took an average value, the average amount of damage to those return vehicles. Those had a percentage of damage assigned to those. We took the average of those. Now we've combined all those together and we end up with a total devaluation of damage of 47%. So that makes the adjusted auction estimate $18,317. Now we could have stopped there, but odds are the person who's doing this evaluation, maybe they're not the best writer, or maybe they have hundreds of cars to do and they don't want to write hundreds of descriptions to put these up for auction. Maybe they're going on a website. So we're going to leverage a second large language model. We're going to leverage the AI21 Labs Ultra model, and that's through Amazon Bedrock, Amazon's new large language model or foundation model service. And leveraging the AI21 Labs Ultra model, we're able to pass in all of this information or most of this information. Now, the more information you pass in, sometimes it's too much information and the model can get a little confused. So we're passing in the important things, the year, make, model of the car, the body style, the drivetrain, the engine, some of the additional features, the color, the current mileage, and and the initial auction estimate, the amount of damage, and the adjusted auction estimate. We pass all that into the large language model. And you can see here in this example, the AI21 Labs model did a really nice job of coming up with a pretty brief description, again, based on the information we passed in and a, a fairly small prompt template that instruction on, instructs it on what to do. We came back with a really nice description of that. Now this description is editable, so we can go in here and edit this if there's something we don't like. When we're all done editing it, we have two choices. First, we can play that back, and I'll show you an example of that. Let me just speed this up a little bit. So we can play this back to hear how it sounds. If you're like me, I can read something 10 times, but I might not pick up on an error or mistake. But oftentimes listening to that is very helpful. We could also use a sound snippet as part of our website for the auction. This is a 2021 BMW 330i four-door sedan with a hardtop, rear-wheel drive, and a 2.00 liter, four-cylinder, 255 horsepower, gasoline-powered engine. So all that information came from the details that we got back from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. We did a little bit of regex, combined those fields together, passed those fields in dynamically to a prompt template that was passed into the AI21 Labs Ultra model, and that was able to come back with a really nice description. Now we have some other options here. For our Spanish speaking folks that might wanna purchase this vehicle, and again, this could be any language, we convert the description to Spanish. Could you use services like Amazon Translate? In this case, since the AI21 Labs Ultra model is capable of producing output in several languages, we're gonna use the model itself. So we're gonna use a large language model to write this in Spanish. And we see our description in Spanish. Couple more features. Let me switch back to English. So we're back to our English description. Now we all know what an auctioneer sounds like, or most of us have heard an auctioneer. We probably have a pretty good idea of what an auctioneer sounds like. So one of the other options is to switch from a pretty standard description to one that sounds like an auctioneer just for fun, or you could use it for the auction or give that script to the auctioneer. To show the power of the large language model, we have a second prompt template that asks for the response to sound like an auctioneer. And we really didn't have to give it a lot of additional prompting. The AI21 Labs Ultra model had a, seemed to have a pretty good sense of what an auctioneer sounds like, at least in English. Now in other languages, the auctioneer didn't translate to well the concept of an auctioneer but in english it does a pretty good job so let's switch over to the auctioneer style and see what the ai21 labs ultra model can do for us so we can see we have a new description and it's made to sound like an auctioneer so ladies and gentlemen maybe we'll play a little snippet of that ladies and gentlemen step right up and place your bids on this 2021 bmw 330i this luxurious four-door sedan is sure to turn heads with its sleek gray exterior and 255 horsepower gasoline powered engine so you can see that description is a little different using the auctioneer style 
One last option we have is the degree of creativity. Now, if you're familiar with large language models, this is the temperature, usually zero to one. In this case, we've just limited it to zero to 0.5. And here's the reason. We really want an accurate description of the vehicle. What happens when we start to increase the creativity, even anything above zero or the temperature, we start getting hallucinations. And what I mean by that is the description of the car starts containing details that we didn't give it and are not necessarily accurate. A good example would be the interior versus the exterior color of the car. Oftentimes when we increase the temperature, you'll see it'll start talking about the interior of the car, features of the interior, color of the interior, whether or not it contains leather or not. And that's just not accurate. The other thing that we see quite a bit is it describes the condition, especially for the auctioneer, is pristine or beautiful. Now, if the car has damage, if it has 50% of damage or devaluation, obviously the condition is not pristine. So you really have to be careful when using this degree of creativity. What it does do is it really makes some of these descriptions a little more fun. It adds a little more creativity to the description. And again, this is editable. So if you increase the level of creativity and maybe there's a fact in there that's not quite accurate, you can edit that out. But overall, the description may just sound better to you. So we can increase the level of creativity we'll go up to 0.3 and we can see we got back a different description and hopefully it's a little bit more creative so that's the creativity feature the final feature I'll show you and we'll finish up here is the ability to save the analysis. So we've input all the initial information, we've made third-party API calls, we've done some individual image analysis, we've taken all that and combined that into a final analysis, we've come up with an adjusted auction estimate, we've written a description that we're happy with, maybe we've edited that description. When we're all done, we have the ability to save that information. So when we save that information, it writes a JSON file. We use the VIN number to create a unique file and that file can be written to a database. In this case, the intention is that it's written to Amazon DynamoDB that could be any type of database or data store. So we want to persist that information once we've created the description and input all the information and come up with the final analysis. So we've saved that file off. That completes a demonstration of the AI-powered vehicle damage evaluator.